Hello everyone, just wanted to do this quick video on skinny guppies, um, and really any fish actually, but mostly guppies and what could cause it. So these fish have been thin for a while. And I don't actually think they eat either. I'm trying to get a better picture. So there's five fish in here. And that one actually would be quite good if it wasn't losing condition. So there's a few females and then like three males. <laughs> Trying to get them to swim around a little. Anyway, so can't see any obvious lesions. That's the first thing I'll be looking for. And like, if it had an internal parasite, like a worm, you'd usually see symptoms of that. Like you would see red stringing or something. With these fish, that's not the case. And they've also been medicated for like actual worms too. So with my research, this is what I've been looking at so far. Some stuff's obviously been ruled out so that hasn't really been ruled out yet people would think okay they have a nematode which is a round worm and then you would medicate with levamisole so that's been done there's never been any symptoms of worms unlike in the other guppies where they have like literal worms um so that was ruled out cross that off and then um never had any symptoms of those either be medicated with metronidazole so they don't have that that's pretty common too and they these are I was just looking for anything which had symptoms of being skinny and then that's a most recent one I found um, which that medication is kind of hard to get so <clears throat> be trying that if this other stuff doesn't work so this stuff has been ruled out cryptobiosis is actually similar to um spironucleus but except metronidazole doesn't work for it so um mycobacteriosis i would be expecting to see ulcers and like curved spine if they had that um and they've been medicated with canamycin anyway a lot of them i think it's supposed to be in food but anyway so i don't think it's that um that's pretty hard to treat like i can't even get hold of those medications and i feel like i would there would be more symptoms um if if they had that this um, is another thing that's just hard to medicate because I can't get either of those two drugs here. Um, <clears throat> so with microsporidia, actually neonatal disease is microsporidian, except I don't think you can really medicate that. And zebra, um, I think they're called zebra danios. Um, they they do have um, one which is uh, microsporidia, and it makes them really skinny and. Um, I think they get a bent spine as well, okay, except none of these have a bent spine. So, um, and I also managed to find mebendazole, and I treated them with that. And I don't know if it's, if it's really had any effect, to be honest. So, I don't think it's any of these. None of them have bent spines. Now, the one thing I do notice with these is they all have pale gills, which leads me to think maybe it's a gill parasite. Like that could be a possibility. So then I was researching, can just can basically continuing research. Um, for anything which said anorexia or like emaciation. So now as guppy gill diseases. Um, gill cryptobia, which is pretty much the same as cryptobiosis, except it's just on the gills. So that's uncommon as well, that can cause emaciation and anorexia. And uh, all of these can actually be treated with formalin, so it could be that. It could be this, which is guppy disease, which is uncommon, but it's more common in guppies. So pretty much wasting... Um, with tetrahymenosis although I think with that they usually have dots except they don't look like eek they're like really small and kind of like weird like flat I don't so I don't really think it's that either 
um, sessile ciliate, that's pretty common. Um, I can't really say if it is that or if it isn't, it isn't, but it's certainly more likely. And that's probably the most likely also. So, I don't know, like, what that actually looks like on the fish, if there's any, any symptoms, but, um, it can be in the gills, obviously. And so, anorexia, and, um, so all this stuff can be treated with formalin, so I just gotta wait till the formalin arrives, and then I can try that on the fish, and see how that goes. So, if your fish are skinny and not eating, um, and they have, like, optimal conditions, it's best to formalin like to try formalin because it seems like that can like cure a lot of issues like especially with gills um and then like <clears throat> metronidazole um is usually a go-to as well but it didn't help me but um yeah and if, if there's any actual signs of uh, worms and obviously treating for worms and then if that does, stuff doesn't work that's when you need to try like other stuff